In this video, we are going to be talking about AVN or avascular necrosis. As the name suggests, avascular necrosis is the death of the bone or necrosis, which results from a situation where there is a problem with the vascular system. Avascular necrosis is death of a bone tissue because of poor blood supply or avascularity, lack of blood supply. This disease predominantly affects the long bones particularly the femur which joins at the hip. So hip joint is one of the most commonly affected joints because of avascular necrosis. The other joints can be the head of the humerus, sometimes the tibia and sometimes even the, the mandibular joint. These are some of the commonly affected joints because of avascular necrosis. But among these the most common and the most frequently encountered condition is avascular necrosis of the hip. The exact cause of avascular necrosis is still not fully established. However, there are some causes. It is considered to be a multi, uh, multi-variable issue or being caused by a number of causes. One of the most common causes is the blockage in the blood supply due to the administration of steroids. The most, one of the most common causes of precipitation of avascular necrosis is administration of steroid related drugs at a high dose over a period of time like in the case of severe autoimmune diseases or in the cases where people are suffering from asthma or conditions like that which require the use of steroids over a long period of time. This condition is known to precipitate avascular necrosis in a number of patients. Some of the other causes that are attributed to avascular necrosis are arteriosclerosis which is a result of dyslipidemia. A person having high lipids in the blood is said to be prone to avascular necrosis. Some of the other causes are not yet fully known, but these are very, very uh, common causes. And there is avascular necrosis of unknown etiology as well. However, what happens in this condition is that the blood supply to the bone gets affected, especially at the terminal ends of the bone. When they don't get blood supply, the bone tissue, which is going into a state of hypoxia or lack of oxygen, they die. The cells in that region dies and then the body in its effort at trying to correct that particular death of the cells creates new bone cells due to the activity of osteoclasts and osteoblasts. That results in the formation of new bone tissue in that area but not as capable or not the normal type of uh, bone cells as were originally present. So this new bone in fact sometimes is also implicated as being a reason for further deterioration in the blood supply. So the avascular necrosis is a complication that happens due to this poor blood supply to the end of the bone leading to a situation where that bone tissue becomes very weak and non-functional especially in the weight bearing joints as in the case of the hip. When the underlying bone becomes weak and as the pressure of the body, the weight of the body acts on the joint there is a tendency for this joint to collapse, for this bone to collapse. So that is the, the most complicated stage of avascular necrosis, upward of stage 4 and 5, where there is collapse of the femoral head. So avascular necrosis is divided into several stages. There are different varieties of dividing the stages, but however, one of the most common uh, ways of dividing the stages of avascular necrosis talks about stage 0, where persons are absolutely fine, there is no problem. Stage 1, where there is a slight doubt whether there is a uh, avascular situation leading to avascular necrosis and stage 2 where actually some sclerosis has already taken place that is the surface of the bone, so the bone below the surface of the articular cartilage is actually sclerosed. Depending on the, the quantum of that particular sclerosis it is again divided into A, B, C and so on. In stage 3 there is no there is still no collapse of the bone of the articular surface. And stage 4 means the collapse of the bony surface, that is the round surface which really articulates with the acetabulum is no more circular and it has collapsed. That is stage 4. Before stage 3, it is known, before stage 4 rather, before the femur has completely collapsed, it is already known that avascular necrosis can be reversed. Though the success rate is generally not very good in conventional medicine. The treatment in modern medicine is mostly symptomatic and also in the form of support. 
person is asked to lose weight is asked to use crutches and so on to, to take away the pressure from the joint and also surgical procedures are used otherwise in terms of medication it is only in supportive medication like pain relievers and so on and so forth which help in relieving this if a uh, vascular problem if, if a lipid problem is suspected in those cases anti-lipidemic drugs or anti-dyslipidemic drugs are administered like statins are used to improve the lipid profile thereby with the hope that the blood supply would re resume and improve the condition there is also the concept of using alendronate and so on uh, or bisphosphonates are being used in the hope of strengthening the bone tissues so as to relieve or re uh, reverse the sort of avascular necrosis that is happening in the joint however conventional medicine is success is very very uh, not i mean the medical treatment is not seen to be very successful and very often patients are subjected to surgical procedures the most common surgical procedures used for avascular necrosis are decompression of the bone of late also decompression along with uh, stem cell therapy is being recommended in an experimental manner however decompression comprises of removal of some of those tissue allowing space for new bone to form and blood supply to improve in some cases decompression is so shown to be effective especially when it is done at stage 2 and so on but not many cases succeed and eventually they get into a situation where they are advised to undergo total hip replacement it is in this context that Ayurveda offers a very good uh, medical solution as opposed to a surgical intervention for the treatment of avascular necrosis. Ayurveda has a very good concept of Shrodha as well as as a Rasayana which means something that is able to relieve the blockages in the flow of materials in the body. By using Panchakarma which is the five eliminative therapies as described in Ayurveda, Ayurveda has a very beautiful concept of improving the circulation of tissues as well as nutrients in the body and also improving the intracellular transfer of materials which are blocked due to several factors as understood as Ama in Ayurveda. So one of the important aspects of the Ayurvedic treatment comprises of removing the Ama from the body, removing the Srodha Rodham as we call it that is the blockage of the channels that are present in the body which helps in reperfusion, which helps in the nutrition reaching every particular part of the body. This is followed by strengthening treatment. Ayurveda is again very popular for anti-degenerative effects of many of its treatment and herbs. These anti-degenerative herbs are then and treatments are administered thereafter after the Srotha Rodham is removed through Panchakarma. And this sort of treatment approach helps to nourish the tissues naturally. So we are finding with our experience that several patients who are in late stage 3 and early stage 4 also improving dramatically with Ayurvedic intervention comprising of Panchakarma as well as the Rasayana therapies and anti-degenerative interventions. Ayurveda uses a whole lot of oil based and other uh, therapeutic procedures which are done entire body as well as locally. We also have concept of detoxification comprising of the five eliminative procedures like Vamanam, Virecharam, uh, two types of Vastis and Nasyam. Of course, Nasyam is not very commonly used in this particular condition, but the most important treatment that is used is called the Vasti. So, Ayurvedic treatment comprising of Vasti as well as the Rasayana procedures and anti-degenerative herbs and herbal preparations which are used are able to reverse the sort of symptoms Patients are able to move around much better and we are able to postpone or avoid surgery in most cases. So this is a very uh, good alternative that Ayurveda is able to provide to patients who are looking forward to avoid surgical interventions and lead good quality of life despite being, suffering, despite being diagnosed as suffering from severe stages of avascular necrosis.